Okay. Jocelyn, I'm like an amphitryon. What? Porque eh, puedo ver cada vez que alguien eh, solicite el ingreso. Ah, no quieres, ¿no? Porque se, se, me tapa, okay. se me tapa toda la parte de... Ok, ya. Yeah. Uh, I removed you from being a... Jocelyn, I'm like an amphitryon. Oh, What? Bien. Porque eh, puedo... <laughs> ok, ya. Yeah. Ready. I was repeating the presentation in my YouTube. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> It's like an echo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you see me now? I moved ah, up. yes, Mauricio, yes. you were there. <laughs> yes. You were looking very dark only. <laughs> dark. Now I changed my, uh -huh. in front of the window. Now I'm... The position, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you have to receive the light <laughs> on the, in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, everything is set. Uh, and we'll start at, at uh, 11 with Noemi's presentation. And Hi, Jessica. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Buen día. Buenos días. Hola, Ramiro. Buenos días. Buen día. Ramiro. Hola, Ramiro. Hola, Noemí. ¿Qué tal, Ramiro? Aquí estamos. Hola, Jessica, y otros. Hi, Anne. <laughs> ¿Cómo Hi. están? ¿Cómo estás? Yo muy temprano aquí. Sí. Es demasiado temprano para ponerme mi lentes, lentes de contactos. <laughs> sí, nos dijo Kirk que, que eran las siete. Sí. <laughs> you made it, Anne. Good for you. Yes, you too. Muy bien. Well, I'm not completely here. Oh, okay, you're only a segment. <clears throat> you know what I mean? I think we should start. Okay. 
Yes. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to all the attendants to our next uh, webinar today in the framework of our IGCP 707 project, origin, distribution, and biochemistry of arsenic in the Altiplano Puna Plateau of South America. Uh, we are conducting as uh, maybe some of you, of you were in the previous lectures, um, we're conducting a, a series of these webinars uh, to, to let you uh, know and to share experiences and some results of our research uh, in this field of arsenic in South America. Uh, today, uh, we're going to have um, well, the leaders of our project uh, are Jessica Murray of CONICIT, the of uh, University National of Salta, uh, Jocelyn Tapia, the University of Catholic in North of Antofagasta, Chile, Dr. Kirk Nostrom from USA, Geological Survey, in the United States, and uh, Mauricio Ormachea and me from uh, the University of Mayor de San Andres in La Paz, Bolivia. So today we're going to have a um, webinar. Uh, the title of the webinar is Origin and Health Chemistry of Arsenic in Pozuelos Basin. Um, UNI ECP Biosphere Reserve in the Argentina Puna, conducted by uh, Dr. Jessica Murray. Dr. Jessica Murray is a researcher at CONICET Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, she works at IBIGO Institute in Salta, Argentina. She has a geology degree from National University of Rio Cuarto and a PhD in geology from National University of Salta. Uh, she conducts uh, research on the geochemistry and of argenic, uh, arsenic in surfaces of groundwater and the geochemistry of mining waste and acid rocks drainage. So I leave you uh, with uh, Jessica, please. Give your, your talk. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Noemi, for your introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's start with my talk. Uh, so, yes, as uh, Noemi said, I'm going to tell you about the origin and geochemistry of arsenic in Los Pozuelos Basin, uh, UNESCO Biosphere Reserve in Argentina and Puna. Uh, the results I'm going to show you are part of my PhD thesis and also uh, my postdoc. And now I'm continuing with my research career um, doing research in this place. Most of you must be familiar with this map, which is the map showing the areas in the world with high arsenic content and uh, where people is affected by drinking arsenic with high concentrations, drinking uh, water with high concentrations of arsenic. Uh, one of the regions in the world is well known as the Chaco Pampian Plain in Argentina. Uh, in Argentina, uh, I, I want to show you this map from 2018. And this map is showing the distribution of the population in green, in green, in green scale and the arsenic concentrations in red and orange. I am also showing here with a circle uh, the, um, the area of the Chaco Pampian Plain. In this region, we have uh, most one of the highest uh, arsenic concentration and also the um, highest density of population. 
and the arsenic in this um, in the groundwaters it, it has an origin in volcanic ash and volcanic glass that is coming from the volcanic arc situated in the Andes uh, range. Um, in Argentina, uh, the limit value for uh, arsenic in groundwater, in drinking water, uh, has, has had uh, a lot of modifications. The last modification was last year and the new legislations, they set the limit on 10 micrograms per liter. However, for those areas with high natural arsenic content or those areas where the treatment of water is not possible or difficult to obtain, the, uh, we can accept values of 50 micrograms per liter. Uh, in the case of uh, Los Pozuelos Basin, the study site I'm going to show you, it is located outside of the Chaco Pampian Plain. It is in the Puna region of uh, northwest of Argentina, and it's one of the uh, areas where less uh, research has been conduct conducted, and also where we have a less uh, uh, density of population. The, um, the Los Pozuelos is immersed in a big region uh, known in the world as the Altiplano Puna Plateau. Um, this, uh, this plateau is the second highest plateau in the world after the Tibet, and it has an elevation about 3,500 meters above the sea level. Um, it's a shared region between Argentina, Chile, Peru, and Bolivia. And in particular, Los Pozuelos is situated in the, north, uh, in the northern part of the Puna, uh, it, close to the limit with the Bolivian Altiplano. Um, th in this map, uh, we um, are showing the distribution of the precipitation, which increases from south to north, um, the distribution of the salt flats in the, the south area of the Altiplano Puna Plateau is very dry and the humidity is increasing to the north. And we have a series of lakes, for example, the, Popo, the Titicaca Lake, where we also have a lot of population in, marked in, in yellow. Also, we also have here the Lake Popo, and Los Pozuelos, it's, um, it's the lake that we have in Argentina, uh, in, the, in the extreme where the precipitation starts to be more abundant. This, um, this basin is very important uh, from the point of view of the biodiversity in the Altiplano Puna because uh, it con it, the water remains in the lagoon um, and it could harbor many species of um, aquatic birds. Uh, this is a picture of, of the flamingos that usually nest in the lagoon. And also, for example, some birds that are coming from the North Hemisphere from Canada. We also have um, uh, the the local fauna, the uh, vicuñas and llamas, and people living in this area share their culture with um, more, their culture is closer to Bolivia and Chile than to the rest of the Argentinian country. Um, this site, because of it, it's important, has been, it's a protected area and has been declared a natural monument a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and a Ramsar site. The amount of population in the region is around 353,500 people. And um, in some cases, they drink water from the rivers, but um, there is a lot of people living in the, in the basin. Then uh, they build their houses and in the backyard, they have a well where they take the groundwater for drinking and cooking. The objectives of this research were to determine the geochemistry of waters 
major ions and physical chemical parameters to determine the arsenic concentrations in surface and groundwaters to provide arsenic speciation data, which is very scarce for the Altiplano Cunha, to identify the sources of arsenic and to identify the effect of the strong dry wet season periods occurring in the, in the area. So now I'm going to show you first the settings of los pozuelos spacing, the methodology that we use, the geochemical characterization of the waters, the arsenic in waters, sources of arsenic, and a conceptual model that we started to develop. Regarding the geology, the most important things to take in account is the, um, that this is a closed basin. And in the west border, there is a, a high range, uh, more than five, uh, more than 4,000 uh, meters above the sea level. And these are Ordovician shales, marine shales. There is, um, they have a low grade of metamorphism and they contain high amount of pyrite. And also in, in black uh, squares, um, there are, uh, you, the, I, mark, I marked the presence of gold deposits uh, with uh, rich arsenic. In the south, we have the presence of uh, volcanic rocks. And um, uh, because of the lagoon had some fluctuations during the Pleistocene. In the center of the basin, the aquifer has, um, is composed of lacustrine sediments. And these sediments are surrounded by alluvial uh, deposits, which came from the um, erosion of the mountains. In, regarding the climate, um, the, uh, the, the weather in, in Los Pozuelos is very extreme. The precipitations occur during the austral summer uh, between December and March. However, for, for, for the Puna, it's a very, um, it's a lot of precipitation, around 486 millimeters uh, annually. There is a, a high evaporation and strong winds, especially during dry season, and strong daily thermal fluctuation and UV solar uh, uh, radiation. Um, the methodology that we use uh, during, uh, between 2011 and 2017, we took 66 water samples. Um, we tried to take samples um, during dry season and during wet season. However, the accessibility in wet season is not easy because the, um, when it rains, the accessibility becomes very complicated and not all the sites can be sampled. So most of our samples belong to the dry season. We were taking uh, river samples, groundwaters, and lagoons. In this map, I'm showing um, uh, in red the distribution of the river and lagoon samples, and in blue, the distribution of the groundwater samples. We were analyzing uh, cations and anions, and we were also analyzing um, arsenic uh, species. Uh, arsenic-3 and arsenic-5 with hydrate generation atomic absorption spectroscopy in the laboratory of the USGS in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we also had uh, uh, data of other elements, trace elements, but in this talk, I'm going to talk specifically about arsenic. The geochemical characterization of surface and groundwater is, um, um, for, for the rivers, the pH is, is, uh, is alkal alkali alkaline and the conductivity uh, uh, increases from the, the upstream areas to the discharge into the lagoon and the water time is mainly sodium sulfate and cal uh, sodium bicarbonate and calcium sulfate in those areas where it is close to a mi mining site. 
the lagoon. Uh, it's also alkaline and it has a wide range of conductivity um, that I'm going to show you in, in, a, in another slide. And also a wide range of different uh, composition uh, and soluble elements in the water. And groundwaters have um, a neutral to alkaline uh, pH and also um, the conductivity increases to the center of the basin. And the, in groundwater, the, the water type is mainly a calcium bicarbonate. Regarding arsenic in groundwater, um, this is the map that we made for the uh, concentrations of arsenic in the different wells that we sample. In green, we are showing the wells with concentrations lower than 10 micrograms per liter. And these wells are located in the area where the aquifer is mainly composed of alluvial sediments. Like if it were a, an, an out ring in the, in the, in the basin. And here the, the mean value for total arsenic is 13.2 and the uh, arsenic five is, uh, has the highest concentration. Um, in yellow, uh, we are showing the, point, the, the, uh, the wells with concentrations between 10 and 50. And these uh, wells are situated uh, in, this, uh, in the direction to the center areas of the basin. And also uh, in, here in this area, we observe the presence of two wells with the highest arsenic concentrations that we found until now with more than 50. Well, eight and well six. Uh, in this, for these wells, uh, they are situated over the the aquifer where the sediments are mainly lacustrine composition. And the average arsenic total is 42.8. And also we also have a high, higher concentration of arsenic five than arsenic three. In this uh, bar diagram, um, we wanted to show that uh, for those sites where we took uh, several samples, there are uh, like a variation in the concentrations. And we want to focus in, in the well w, W8, which is the one with the highest arsenic concentration. And in this well, what we observed, it was that um, during the, the wet season, we were able to take one sample in wet season, the water type was calcium bicarbonate and the arsenic total was 74.3. However, during two dry season samples, uh, we, um, we found water type of potassium bicarbonate and uh, an increase on the arsenic concentration. And uh, the literature says that it is normal that in closed basins in the um, in the close to the center of the basin, there is an increase in, in potassium in the solution and um, uh, while sodium can precipitate as uh, a, fluorescent, so, a fluorescent salt. And we observed that very close to the well uh, eight, we had the presence of uh, tenardite, alite and eusterite, which are minerals, uh, with uh, sulfate, uh, sulfates with sodium um, and correlate very well with the um, increase of potassium and decrease of sodium in groundwaters. And this is uh, Mr. Nelson Wanko and, and he uh, has the um, highest concentration of arsenic that we, got, that we could register until now. Um, then uh, for arsenic in the rivers and in the lagoon, we observe that the lowest concentrations of arsenic are in the headwaters of the rivers, uh, in the upstream areas, 
except for Candado River, which is draining part of the volcanic rock area, and it has a, a concentration of arsenic between 10 and 50. However, uh, for example, in Santa Catarina River, we also observe very low arsenic concentrations. But since the river, which is the main tributary for the lagoon, it's increasing in arsenic. And the um, concentrations between 10 and 50 are uh, typical for the, the area close to the lagoon. During dry season, this river is the main river that, that provides uh, water to the lagoon. And, and, it, and because there is no precipitation, uh, it has a, the source of water in the rivers, it's the, it's the aquifer. In the lagoon, we observe the highest arsenic concentrations. So here uh, I'm showing the mean value for arsenic in the rivers is 9.5. Uh, the um, arsenic 5, it's again the dominant species. And in the lagoon, the mean value increases to 90.4. And we observe that we can also have arsenic 3 as the main species. Uh, in this bar diagram, we are also showing uh, uh, the arsenic concentrations uh, in different years. And in general, the values in each site uh, uh, have a similar uh, value. Uh, however, in, in Los Pozuelos Lagoon, uh, we observe uh, that in one period, uh, in 2015, there was a huge increase on the arsenic concentration. So here I'm showing uh, a picture, um, satellital ima image of how was the fluctuation of the amount of water in the lagoon during the different uh, years that we were sampling, 2013 and 2015. The lagoon was completely full <clears throat> uh, with water. And then in 2016 and 2017, uh, there were very wet, uh, dry uh, summers. And so <clears throat> the lagoon was completely dry. And only uh, the water was only present close to the area where the Sinse River was were, uh, discharging. <clears throat> In, uh, in all the cases, the arsenic concentration was around 50, except for this year in May, in May 2015, where we observed the increment to up to 200 micrograms per liter. So this is um, a, a, a plot showing the concentration of sodium and chlorine in each one of the years also the conductivity, and also the arsenic concentrations. And we can see that in May 2015, the lagoon shows the highest conductivity, chlorium, sodium chlorine concentrations, and also arsenic concentrations. And this uh, gray uh, line is showing the, the arsenic-3. And arsenic-3 was the main uh, species, species dominant in the lagoon. And when arsenic-3 is dominant, it's more soluble. And so we consider that that was uh, making the arsenic to in increase the, in, the, in the lagoon. And uh, we also, for this uh, period, we also observe the presence of iron-2 as a dominant species for iron. And so there, there were um, a strong redox condition, re reductive conditions that uh, provoked the increase on arsenic. And uh, we still don't, uh, we are still thinking what could be that, that made, that produced that. And for that, we are starting to, uh, to study the influence of the biological activity in the lagoon. Regarding the sources of arsenic, 
uh, we identify three, three different sources. The first one is the ancient mine, an abandoned mine, uh, which is situated here, Pan de Azúcar mine, which is producing acid mine drainage. The second source are gold deposits in the mineralized shales in the Rinconada Hills. And the third source is, uh, are the volcanic rocks in the south area of the basin. For the first source, Pan de Azúcar mine, uh, I was studying this site during my PhD. And this uh, mine was closed uh, without any remediation strategy to avoid uh, acid mine drainage generation. And um, um, this is uh, in gray, this is the distribution of the tailings in pavements. And uh, these tailings are very rich in pyrite and other sulfides. Um, we were characterizing the tailings and we, uh, this is a picture of the oxidation process in the tailings. Uh, the gray area is still the sulfides uh, which, are, um, uh, which are not oxidized yet and they are mainly composed of pyrite and marcasite with a very low neutral potential, neutralizing potential. They don't have a calcite. And arsenic is associated to the sulfides, especially um, arsenopyrite and other uh, sulfides containing arsenic. When these tailings are oxidizing, they develop an oxidation zone where the main minerals are charosite and chermonite. And in this case, arsenic will associate to these secondary minerals. However, when uh, during the rain seasons, a lot of uh, a high volume of acid mine drainage is generated and we have very low pH from two to four and the arsenic concentrations vary between 21 and 44 Mil, uh, milligrams per liter. And we have measured arsenic speciation and in all the cases we observe uh, arsenic-5 like the dominant species. What, uh, what is occurring in this site is that during the wet season there is a discharge of acid mine drainage over one of the rivers in the basin which is a tributary of Sincel River. And uh, this river, uh, we were sampling this river upstream of the acid mine dra the drainage discharge. And we observed that it, it has a concentration of arsenic. However, after the input of acid mine drainage, this is a sample from uh, this, this summer, um, the arsenic concentration increases and, and, and this is, a very well um, um, observed in the fluvial sediments where most of the arsenic uh, is uh, absorbed and, uh, up, and we were taking samples up to six kilometers away from the, from the mine and we observed values of up to 108 milligrams per kilogram in the fluvial sediments. Um, so um, the second source, um, I, uh, as I was explaining, uh, uh, in the Rinconada Hills, these uh, marine shales, they have a lot of uh, pyrite, dissemination of pyrite, like you can see here in this block in one of the rivers, and also um, a gold deposits associated to um, quartz veins. Uh, in these uh, quartz veins, um, we can uh, we have arsenopyrite and, and rich arsenic pyrite. One of the authors describing these deposits, Rodriguez et al. 2001, he indicates that arsenic is a good um, element to track high arsenic, uh, high uh, gold uh, concentrations. And uh, uh, so we consider this as a source 
of arsenic because these um, gold deposits uh, are constantly um, we uh, uh, exposed to weathering and slowly introducing arsenic in the basin. Um, and finally, the, we have a volcanic source for arsenic, uh, which is um, uh, which are igneous bright um, rocks that belong to the Coranzuli volcanic complex in the south of the basin. These rocks contain um, a wide range of arsenic from 2.2 micro Microgram, uh, milligrams per kilogram up to 126. In general, the rocks have uh, around this uh, the lowest concentration. However, when they show hydrothermal alteration, the concentration of arsenic increases in the rocks. Um, we consider this as a source of arsenic because of one of the rivers, the Caldado, Shows a, shows a high concentration of arsenic. And also these rocks are easily um, uh, altered by uh, the weathering and they can re easily release the arsenic to, to the fluvial systems. Well, finally, we started to build a conceptual model to explain the origin of arsenic its mobility and how it's going to be uh, finally um, de de deposited in the center of the basin. So we have here the three sources, the abandoned the Azúcar mine, the weathering of the Ingnin brights and the oxidation of, of sulfides in the gold mines. The, this arsenic, uh, uh, goes to the fluvial systems and also to the uh, to the groundwaters. Here, close to the mountains, the aquifer is um, is um, mainly composed of alluvial sediments, and to the center, uh, there is a predominance of lacustrine sediments. And here, in this area, is where we observe a strong um, effect or a strong uh, influence on a, of evaporation on the aquifer because the aquifer is very shallow. And finally, when arsenic goes into the lagoon, it, uh, it, it, it is showing that um, we have an interaction with the uh, organic activity, the biological activity in the lagoon that can change the arsenic concentrations and, and uh, speciation and mobility. Uh, all of these um, results that I was showing are um, published, uh, were published last year in the Science of the Total Environment. And well, uh, what we consider for the future is that we need to better understand the influence of evaporation in the arsenic concentrations, we need to do a better characterization of the lagoon, and we need to better understand the arsenic mobility from the different sources to the groundwater. Once well, finally, to the end of my talk, I want to thank the institutions that, um, that give me uh, fundings for the research, and also the institutions that supported our research, our field trips, and our laboratory work, and especially to the people who in the, living in the basin that allowed us to take samples in their houses. And uh, I want to thank um, uh, the people from the national park that they were always helping us a lot in all the sampling campaigns. And this is a picture of uh, Blaine McLeskey that, that he's uh, helping a lot with the analysis of the arsenic species in, in Boulder. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jessica, for this nice and interesting talk. And 
Uh, I don't know if we, we can start with the with the questions or yes. Yes. Uh, we have yeah two questions in the box in the chat, and we don't have questions in the in the YouTube channel. So uh, one question is from Dina Lopez. Uh, Jessica, do you have precipitation information in your area for the sampling period? How the variation in concentration relate to precipitation? That's the first question. Uh, yes, very interesting question. Uh, the information of precipi on precipitation that I was showing, it's a, uh, it's a um, series of data that stopped in 1994. And only in 2017, there, uh, the National Park installed, uh, together with another researcher from Buenos Aires, they installed a meteorological station. And only from 2017, we are obtaining um, a, the the data on precipitation. So for the unfortunately for the period for from for the time where I was sampling there were not uh, data available. We we have some estimations but not um, but not the data in situ. Well, in the meantime, we're running a poll, if, if you can complete. And then Anne is asking, have you analyzed the evaporite minerals, a fluorescent crust for arsenic, or done or done leach tests on them? No, we only made a x-ray uh, diffraction, diff diffraction for those, and we didn't analyze the arsenic. And we didn't make any leach, leaching test, but that's interesting. Anne. <laughs> yeah, no, I was thinking it, it could be another seasonal source of arsenic to your, you know, that you could add to your conceptual model, which is a very mm -hmm. nice model. Yeah. <laughs> just, a, just a thought. Thanks, Anne. And then we have a congrats. Excellent work and presentation. Thank you for sharing your results of Matthew Sibek. Dina Lopez is asking, in your maps, we see no samples to the north of the basin. Why? And great work. <laughs> yes, good eye. <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. Um, actually, there are not many wells in the north area and the wells where we were sampling were the schools and we need to improve the sampling to the north and yeah and what was the other question um, uh, why no, that's it ah, why? yes because of the there is not many wells but uh, anyway we we, we need to, there are less wells, uh, but we didn't sample all, so we need to improve it. Uh, also, uh, that what happened is that this is part of my, also my PhD, and I started studying the Pan de Azúcar mine, and we were very uh, focused on the impact of the mine in the downstream of, of in the wells downstream of the mine, which are the those wells in the south. That is why we have a lot of sampling in those wells. We have another question of Camila Poblete. Uh, she's asking if, did you find any relation with arsenic and other trace elements? Well, that's something we are analyzing now because we have also the data for lithium, bar, uh, boron, uh, there is not much flor fluorine in the in the basin. Uh, I I started to to plot, uh, but I didn't find me, uh, uh, relations clear relations, for example, with lithium and uh, or boron. 
but this is under analysis now. Um, another question from Juan Pablo Zamora. Uh, he says, excellent presentation, Jessica. I think your work is an important product for water supply planning in the basin. Did you have opportunity to meet water and municipal officials to share them these results? Um, we share the results with the people, uh, with the people where we took the samples. Uh, every after every sampling campaign, we bring the results, and it's very interesting because. Um, some of them, Juan Pablo Zamora, he lives, he knows the region. He works in Argentina, in, in, the, in the Quebrada de Humahuac. Men, uh, some of, of these people, they have two houses. Uh, in general, the one in the low, low area where they go in winter. And then when in summer, because of there is a lot of flood, they go to the up upper areas and they, they have in general two houses and for example in the house where they have the highest arsenic concentration they have another house with low arsenic concentration so we recommended them to drink the water from the other house but that that's not the the best solution because it it would be very nice if if they could start uh, using a treatment uh, system for the waters and yeah we hope we can we can help on that mm -hmm. yeah. another question from mauricio our collaborator he said very interesting presentation similar geochemical characteristics as my own research in popo basin Question is, how dissolved organic matter present in lacustrine sediments affects arsenic concentrations in the water? Compared with groundwater, we prob probably know um, dissolved organic matter. Yeah. Well, that's a very good question, Mauricio. Unfortunately, I, I took some or organic uh, dissolved organic matter samples, but I was uh, I was not able to analyze them, so I'm missing that information. Would be nice to have it in the future. Mm. And Ramiro Escalera, he's asking. Oh, he says, excellent presentation and work. Do you have some information about the health effects on arsenic contents? Well, as well, for me, it's the same as for Mauricio, uh, that uh, I, when I go to the places to take samples, I try to observe the, if people have the typical signs of the palm keratosis or, but they don't, uh, they don't have this, uh, the physical uh, uh, signs of arsenic. Uh, uh, the toxicity of arsenic. Uh, we are not. We were not um, making any um, uh, like following or asking much if they have health problems. Um, however, I know that there is not like the there is not like a register of 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 health problems in the, in the area. Um, that is not done. It, 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 it has not been done. It's not, in, in, for example, in, in San Antonio de los Cobres, in the Puna of Salta, there has been studies conducted in this sense, but in Pozuelos, it has never been done. Uh, we don't have more questions, just uh, uh, that Juan Pablo appreciates your answer. And, and uh, we have a lot of thanks for the presentation and congratulations. Oh, for the sorry, uh, maybe uh, may I have, a, I, I can do a question, <laughs> please. Um, Jessica, uh, I'm wondering how many people live in these places? Is there, if there is a, 
um, a health center or it's a very far from the from the uh, living people or how how is the uh, about the, 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 the people that lives well uh, for for the Argentinian Puna uh, Pozuelos has a lot of inhabitants uh, around, I, uh, it's around more than 3,000 people. It's not a lot, but for us it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And good. they live uh, in small village, uh, uh, very uh, well-known towns for the area because they are, uh, they produce sheep and llamas and they, they sell their products. Uh, but there is also a lot of people living in the rural area. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the most exposed people because the people living in the village, on the little towns, they take water from the rivers or they have the government pay more attention to them and they try to help with the water quality. But the people living in the in the rural area, they they just drink with, uh, groundwater and, and they don't have any supply of, uh, of good quality of water or a water network. Uh, and there is a big town uh, 50 kilometers away, uh, which is called Abrapampa. And they are also close to La Quiaca where there are uh, uh, medical centers. Uh, uh, yes, that's... Uh... Okay, thank you. So uh, maybe it would be interesting to, to look at this uh, yes, uh, illness in this medical center, maybe they have some information and also to apply some questionnaire to, to know about these uh, uh, people that are exposed to. The yes. Water. yes. Also because uh, some wells have a low arsenic concentration, mm. like below ten, and then others have in the in the limit of fifty micrograms per liter. And I think it maybe epidemiologically it's not easy to 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 track, but I think it 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 is very interesting to to study. Yes. To do what you do, Noemi, here. Yes, <laughs> yes, we <laughs> can coordinate. Okay. Well. Uh, we have uh, some congratulations from Maria Aurora Armienta and Carmen Copier. And Brandon Schneider is asking uh, Is there any indication of how arsenic varies with depth in the aquifer? Were some of the samples wells deeper? Uh, were some of the samples wells deeper than others? Yeah, that, that's a, a very good question, Brandon. Um, no, uh, we were always sampling the, a shallow aquifer, a shallow, shallow groundwaters. Uh, we don't know. We were, yes. But most of this, uh, uh, the well are uh, the deepest well wells are around seven meters depth, and the water table from the surface it could be uh, two or three meters. It's very very shallow. We are also wondering if arsenic five that the arsenic five that we are sampling maybe is um, it could be arsenic three, but because it's it's very close to the surface, it's already oxidized. Uh, not, not all the wells have the pumps so that we can pump during a long period and then take a more... Um, so, yes, that, that's what we have. And is asking, uh, as she says, nice presentation, Jessica, worth getting up early for. Is there interest in future gold or other mining in the basin? Is it protected in any way? Well, there is a... <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Uh, well, 
uh, on 2018, there is a, a, a mine that started uh, producing, it, it's a mine similar to Pan de Azúcar, uh, but uh, it is for lead and silver. And, and the gold mines are in general, they are small size. And they, they used to be productive during the, um, the colony uh, when the, the, the people from Spain discovered the, the region and they found the gold and they took the gold. But now the most important mines are closed. I know there is always a company trying ex doing exploration and trying to to see if they can activate one of the mines. But nowadays, uh, there is only one mine active in the, in, in the basin. Um, and there is a, a very uh, complicated situation for the natural area and the, the, nat the National Park Administration because there is a lot of pressure Many people want the mine because they want to have a work, a, a source of work, but many other people they don't want because they, they, they are afraid of the, the contamination to the lagoon. So it's a very, um, um, I don't know the word in English, but uh, like a complicated topic. <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. Yes, right. Is there enough lithium there to have an interest in lithium mining? The, the, the waters in the lagoon have high concentrations of lithium, but the, the Pozuelos is not a target for the mining companies because it's, it's, it's a protected area. They cannot... It is, it is the... the there is, not at to extract any any lithium or anything from the lagoon, and so the companies are more to the south of the Puna, where we have a lot of salt flats, and there is uh, many lithium uh, projects there. Okay, yes. but the lagoon itself is protected. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. But, but really, the water is too dilute in Los Pozuelos. You need brines to get enough lithium to be economic, and you don't have that here. But to the south, I guess you do. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have more questions. OK. okay. Uh, well, maybe <laughs> uh, finally we want to Thank you very much, Jessica, for the nice and very interesting presentation of your results in this topic. And uh, we want to invite to all the attendants to the next uh, and the, the next webinar that it's the the finally the the, the last one of this year uh, that will be conducted by Ramiro Escalera on December 11th. And the topic is arsenic removal using photoreactors photo in a small rural town located in the Bolivia Altiplano. So uh, you are invited to this next and the, the last webinar of the, the year. Thank you to all of you and see you next, next time. Thank you for all the interesting questions. Thank you for participating today. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, muchas gracias. Nos quedamos unos minutos, Jessica, ¿no? Okay. We can stay a little bit. Ramiro is on? No, Ramiro is there. Yes, is here, <laughs> Ramiro. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. It was a very nice presentation. So...